Okay. 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 This will be interesting. This man is not in good shape. He is worried and very tired, and other police have been hard on him. What do you want from me? Present ourselves. Good day, Mr. Cust. I am Hercule Poirot. Ah, you're the detective. Talk about the ladders or ask why he sent the ladders. Or why? Because it was a game for him, so let's talk about them. Yes, I am the person you have been sending the letters to. I didn't write these letters. I've already said so. Mm -hmm. We can acknowledge his innocence, which I'm not fond of, so get him to admit that he has forgot. Maybe you forgot that you wrote these letters. Yes, it's true. Sometimes I forget. Maybe I did type them. Ask if he's capable of killing, accuse him of being a killer. Admit that you do not believe he's a murderer. Oh god, but he... It is him, right? Well, maybe... Hmm. Oh shit, this is not, this is not so easy as I thought it would be. Let's ask him. Are you capable of murder, Mr. Cust? All these questions are giving me a headache. <sighs> Let's get him to talk about the army. You suffered during the war. It's true. I was wounded. I suffered. But... The army was the only place I didn't feel inferior. No questions, just orders to follow. But ever since you were wounded, you have absences, bouts of amnesia. And headaches. <sighs> Professor Clark treated you? Yes, a few years ago he really helped me with my burned throat. Will we get more out of him if we kind of try to make him believe that we think he, he's innocent? Like, psychologically, this would be the wiser choice here, right? Of course, you never considered killing a doctor who took such good care of you. No, no, never. I mean, what if, what if he really isn't the killer, and the killer just takes him as the scapegoat to escape the whole shit? Then it is like officially the ABC murders of Alexander Bonaparte Cust 
But the killer gets away with the shit. But that would mean that the killer knows him. Right? That the killer knows him and knows his work, his, um, his travels, everything. Hmm. Ask him if he acknowledges going to the three towns. Do you deny being at the scene of the crimes? So? There was no harm in being there. It was only for my work. <coughs> oh. Yeah, now he needs his medicine. That's what we got it for. Take this. It will help you. Thank you. Could we have used, like, the sedative now? Probably not. Oh, good God, my shirt is covered in blood again. Bon. I now know where the bloodstains Mrs. Marbury so came from. Are you well enough to speak? Yes, I feel much better. And it says, yep, I don't believe that he killed him. Or if he did, someone else told him to kill him. Leviathan Grease. Yeah, guys, I was, like, at first, I was so sure. But... I mean, we saw him type the letters. We also saw him using... Well, we only saw him using the typewriter, actually. And we saw him, like, going to the towns and everything. But that is all. I mean, if the room was so open that Miss Marbury came in there, she could also be the ABC killer. I mean, the way she treated the potatoes, right? Um... Poor potatoes. Um, I mean, <laughs> actually, what, what, what if it was Miss Marbury? She had access to all of his stuff. The typewriter, and everything. But why? Why? Well, first, why would she do that? Plus. Why would he... Or maybe... Yeah, no, no, no. Maybe he didn't write them. Maybe it's, it was her writing them. And she could, like... Point towards his direction to accuse him. I mean, I was suspecting him, but... Oh, I didn't do anything. Right? Ah, man, I don't know. We should be really careful now, too, actually point into any other direction but it's definitely interesting I feel like um, I feel like we know the murderer already we know him or her and we're close to get to him or her and he's the key Ask him if he acknowledges going to the three towns again. Um, say that witnesses saw him in the three towns. You were seen at all the crime scenes. Yes, I was. I travel a lot, but not for pleasure. I am terribly unwell in trains. But I had to respect my engagements. My employer gave me very precise written instructions about the towns I had to visit. <coughs> mm. <coughs> Let's see. The company you claim to work for, Silky Legs, has never heard of you. And as for these letters they sent you, they were written on your own typewriter. The company sent me the typewriter when I started working for them. 
Yes, but the letters were received afterwards. <sighs> cool. So, the, yeah, so I guess the real killer used the whole employment thing to actually point him where to go and where to be just in the right place at the right time. Um, but the letters were sent after the typewriter was there, so that hints that, that points in the direction of Miss Marbury. But, um, hmm, I mean, he got, he got uh, the stockings and instructions, so somehow they, they came to him. And it was the same, yeah, it was written on that very same machine. <sighs> so it would appear that you typed them before sending them to yourself. It proves that you wrote them. It only proves that, he, well, if it was him, that he wrote them. Not that he, not that he sent them to himself, right? Hmm. It proves that you wrote them. I may have. Good God! I don't know what's happening to me. My head hurts terribly. Okay, probably we need the uh, sedative now. Can we have a look at He's him again? He's prey to a terrible anxiety. Is it remorse? Or simply the pressure of the questioning and the train journey? I'd say the latter. <coughs> Take this. It will help you. <coughs> we have everything that you will need in any case. <laughs> Next the knife. Oh, I think I'll be fine. Let us see, Cust. Look at me. You know very well that you committed these murders? Yes, I know. But I'm not wrong in saying that you do not know why you committed them. No, I don't. Hmm. Um, in, in our law, in our, um, penal law, or penal law, um, there's something like a killer that uses another person as an objective, like, um, a longer arm, so to say, to make the killings, so maybe this is, this is just the case here. Him being just the the killing instrument, instructed by the killer not knowing that he is an instrument. Let us leave Cust alone. He's at the end of his tether. And what conclusions have you drawn? Plenty. It might help us to understand him a little better. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. That's it. That's... <clears throat> what do we know about Cust's health? He suffers. He has problems with his throat. Suffers from absences. He had no, uh, he had no reason to kill him. He did not appear to recognize Burrow. No, thought like his mind maybe. Hmm. Well, there we go. Cause it's mentally and physically weak. Not really the profile of our killer. More like the mentally weak, right? That doesn't fit. 
Are there any clues that do not support Cust's guilt in the Churston murder? What was the Churston murder again? C was Carmichael, right? Yeah. Um... Are there any clues that do not that do not support Cust's guilt? Was attacked from behind, blood spurted out in the uh, direction of the sea. And he had no reason to kill him. Or though the blood was on his shirt. Yeah. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the bottom holes. Yet, we see quite the opposite. Are there any clues that do not support Cust's guilt? Well, his, yeah, his, his collection starts, like, in the middle. And he had no reason. Maybe I'm too fast though. Um, are there any clues that do not support Cust's guilt? Would expect a murderer to keep newspaper articles about all his crimes, but Cust's collection starts in Churston, as if you heard about the case later on. He did not appear to recognize Poirot. He had no reason to kill him. Well, the killer knows. Well, right, so probably this is a thing. And yeah, and the newspaper collection. Several details which show that Cus is not guilty. Can we say without a shadow of a doubt that Cus is guilty? Can we say without a shadow of a doubt that Cus is guilty? No, we can't. He had no reason to kill them. And he says that he didn't did not write them. He's not guilty. Bam. I don't see any clearer than before. This is worse. <laughs> there is one point, Twilight. C'est curieux. Cust admits that he killed, but he does not know why. What did Dr. Thompson say? Even if Cust killed while in an altered state, it still must have been his deepest desire. He must have had a motive. Let's keep it simple. Never mind his motive. He confessed. But you see, he can confess to anything and everything. He denied the murders and then he confessed to them. He confirmed that he never typed the letters. Then, with great ease, I managed to get him to say quite the opposite. Come on, he behaved like a guilty man. He lied to his landlady. Because deep down he believes himself guilty. From the papers, he noticed that he had always been at the scene of the crimes. He must think that he killed and then simply forgot what he had done. How can you be so sure? Let us look at his psychological profile. You will understand my point of view. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. It's like totally, um... Weak to manipulation. And that doesn't fit at all. Is Cust clever? Uh, the army was the only place he didn't feel inferior. Mm, yeah, this could be it. Hesitant and shy. Cust sure of himself. No, he's very hesitant and shy. Easy to influence. Is Cust a seducer? Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Um, C 
seducer. Well, if he was a seducer, she may have remembered. No. Without any charm. Does cuss like trains? Nope. He doesn't. This cuss impulsive. He's cold. And his cuss generous. You see? Cus character is quite the opposite of the murderers. But if he's a madman, can we really talk about his character? You know very well that how a murderer does not behave like a psychopath. Apart from the signature, there is no ritual or repetition in the choice of victims. Very well, very well. You're right, as always. So, we have no confession, no culprit, no suspects, nothing. And all that after two months of inquiry? What should I do? Have faith. Just give me 24 hours. Hmm. Okay, so anyone of you um, who doesn't know yet the answer to this, where would you place your bet? Because I feel like we know him already. Or her. Um, what do you think? Who's the one? To White Heaven, please. Cust's arrest is a great success for you, Poirot. It's all clear now, except maybe one or two details. Hmm. Details? Ah, mon ami. The devil is in the detail, as we say. Excuse me? Patience, Hastings. Everything will be clear once I guest arrive. Best be prepared. Slip a revolver into your pocket before they do. A revolver? But Poirot, what are you afraid of? Trust me. It is important you carry a weapon for this meeting. I will lend you mine. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. And that makes a guess. The butler. The cat. The seagulls or Mr. Hastings? Or the train? I would say the seagulls did it. <laughs> okay. The white ammunition are blank cartridges. The others are real bullets. Yeah, and what do we need? I mean, you did. <laughs> okay. Leviathan thinks it's the cat. Fair enough. Uh, do we need the real ones? The revolver is loaded with real bullets. I still have time to choose blanks. The revolver is loaded with blanks. I still have time to choose real bullets. Are you kidding me? Okay. We chose the blanks now. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. Loaded my revolver is loaded. I now have to give it to Hastings. We have no <laughs> we have no train sound yet. Okay. You know what? <clears throat> oh, there it is. 
I'm gonna write it down, all right? Just for you. <laughs> I'm gonna note it down. So soon we have, uh, we'll have some train sounds, all right? I was actually uh, looking forward to tomorrow to um, get some new sounds and update ones and yeah, it's gonna happen. Okay, let's give them the blank ones. I don't know if, the, if if that was the right choice, but I feel like we're maybe tricking Hastings. I don't know why, but that's what it makes me feel like now. So that's why I decided for the blanks. Voila! I don't trust you with my weapon. It has hardly been used. It is almost new. We got an achievement. Gandhi moustache. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chief Inspector, is that you? Yes. Sorry, but we haven't found anything. Have you checked the typewriter? And the packaging, the letter, and the ribbon reel. We've only found prints left by Cust and his landlady. Well, never mind. I shall make do. So, are you still going to hold your meeting? Of course, Chief Inspector. I can hear my guest coming up the stairs. Why have you brought us here, Mr. Poirot? Since Cust arrest, I thought it was all done and dusted. Miss Gray formally identified him, as well as Miss Barnard. Yes, and the stockings he saw drove the same brand as the ones found at my aunt's. <laughs> this is all true. However, a case is not closed if some questions remain open. And one question is, why did the murderer send me his letters? Why did he challenge me, Hercule Poirot? Perhaps he wanted to play with you, to taunt you. Xenophobia? Maybe he didn't like you because you're foreign. Um, I may be wrong, but maybe by provoking you, he was looking for glory? All these theories should be studied. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Hmm. Can you feel it? This is like the showdown here. Like he says, something like the I like train thing on Discord, please, for the sound. <laughs> what? I like train? Okay, you gotta show me that later on. Oh, God, I did it again. I'm always mouse scrolling there. Mouse wheel scrolling. Okay, why did the murderer make a mistake in the address? Do you have time? Letters late arrival saved the murderer, of course. Yeah. What? Why did the murderer... Okay, I'll do it. Uh, why did the... Why did the murderer make a mistake in the address? <sighs> Maybe because the address was not well known, but I don't know. Let us late arrival save the murderer. That is important, right? And the error in the address caused the letter to be delivered late. I think that's also important. And there was always a warning, so the mistake is intentional. Yeah, because he he knew the right address. Why did the killer send his letters to Hercule Poirot? I think. Because he wanted to challenge him for glory. No? 
because he has an inferiority complex? No. Okay, then it has to be xenophobia, but I feel like that is completely off. But let's see. No. Huh? Why did the killer send his letters to a group borrow? Because the body was still warm? Huh? Okay, may maybe I'm... Maybe I'm not getting it here. Why did the killer send his letters to us? Right? Because the body was still warm? No. Because there was a piece, of, uh, there was a piece of the envelope with the wrong address. No. Because Poirot's address is not very well known. That's that's why he sent it there because it's not no. Murderer challenged Poirot because an, he has an inferiority complex. I don't think so, but I tried that. It's it's not right. So. He challenged Poro for glory. That's what I thought. That's not true. So, xenophobia, also not true. So why did the killer send his letters to Hercule Poirot? Because his address was not very well known. <laughs> what? Is everything clear now? No. <laughs> hmm, you might like to explain your reasoning again. Of course. First of all, remember that the murderer made it a rule to always post his letter before the murder. He never digressed from that rule. However, in Churston, he encountered a problem. The village has only 500 inhabitants. With advance warning, it would be easy to arrest him. Therefore, the murderer delayed his letters deliberately with the wrong address. The plan wouldn't have worked if he'd sent it to Scotland Yard or the papers because everybody knows their addresses. The mistake would have been corrected and the letter would have been on time. That is why the murderer chose me as the recipient. Because for his plan to succeed, it was necessary for at least one of the letters to have a wrong address and get lost. It was very cunning. Absolutely. It is a very subtle plan. It matches the profile we have drawn up of him perfectly. That of an intelligent, daring and calculating murderer. But that's not how you describe Cust. You are quite right, mademoiselle. Like you, I find it hard to believe that this dull character is the clever murderer we are looking for. Do madmen... I mean, if he's mad, he might have two very different sides. No doubt. But the murderer is not mad. All the specialists agree that he does not have the profile of a psychopath. But if Cust is not guilty, how do you explain his presence at the scene of the crimes? Mr. Clark, the answer to your question is in the medical records of your brother's patients. Documents which Cust most certainly did not have access to. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, I got what uh, the connection there was. Um, in like the conversation, it was explained a bit better. If he would have sent it anywhere else, it would have been more easily corrected and it would have been um, sent earlier. So the murderer would have lost time. <laughs> it's a bit unsatisfying though because... Um, the answer doesn't make any sense if you think about like it was the third the third letter already so not a well-known address in that case just misled me but it makes sense it makes sense um, okay so what do we so what do we know about cast that he's easily influenced and Maybe it's not a coincidence. Maybe he was sent there. Um, I 
and he was in a war and it's not the same anymore. That that's what we know about him. Right? Obviously not. Well. No. Mm. We know several things about him, but what this question implies to kind of want to have now is, is the real question. So, we know he was wounded during war. more general like that he's door-to-door -door salesman uh, this, will, this will take some time again because I feel like we know several like let's say at least six of these things we know about him but <laughs> these are not the things that, that we're asked for obviously but they would fit what do we know about him? That he was a door-to-door -door salesman. That's that's a fact. This is also a fact, but I, I don't think that's the right one here, yeah. Uh, Wanted to see the crime scenes. I'm not sure that we that we completely know that. No. <sighs> okay. The two basic things that we know are that he was wounded during the war, that's something we know, that he was in the war and has never been quite the same in the hat since, that's something we also know. And he's a door-to-door -door salesman, that's also something we know, but it's like maybe this part we don't know so well this is also also something that we know because we found uh, the newspapers but you only had it uh, f like from Churston or something he tries to overcome his travel sickness by traveling often by train and that he's easily influenced well that like this is something that I would say we know but yeah Not again. I'm always struggling once we have like multiple things that would all fit in there. Like I could I could name like at least four things here that really fit. <sighs> maybe well, maybe this goes together with the influence thing. Nope. 
Can we, can we do like the second one yet? No. This is something that we don't know, if you ask me. That's just an assumption that he went to Bexhill because he wanted to swim, right? Uh, but maybe that's the solution. Okay guys, prepare. It's gonna be trial and error again. <laughs> guys have any idea like tell me please Reading a walkthrough, I don't know how you're supposed to pick these two. One of them makes sense, the other not so much. Well, buddy, this is exactly why, why I'm struggling. I feel like sometimes these are super easy. Like, you've seen it. I think like 15 minutes ago or something. We were just like, dude, 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 dude. And it's totally fine. But when, whenever like um, several things actually make sense, um... It is super hard because then you need to guess what the game wants you to get to. And that makes it really hard. I can I can try that, Leviathan. Okay. Influence in war, yeah. You're right. I mean, that he was wounded during war? Okay. But that... That this one goes with this one? I wouldn't draw the line between those two um, directly. I mean, there, there are more here that would fit a bit more, but okay. Glad that's over. <laughs> But yeah, Leviathan, did you did you come up uh, on your own with that? Then uh, I got a bow because good job. <laughs> uh, how do I explain Cus's pr presence at the crime scenes? Um, because he was a salesman and he wanted to swim. No. Um, Gus buys newspapers. Uh, he wanted to see the crime scene. Yeah, oh, maybe. Maybe he wanted to see the crime scenes, but I'd just say, like, he was ordered there to work, right? But the 
these two don't go together. Hmm. Why was this is this is bad um, phrased badly? Like it is not a co in coincidence that he went to the victims' towns. He went there on purpose and probably on purpose of the killer. Right? So it's not a coincidence. He was sent there, basically. Um... Just put these two together. Mm. This game is a little bit silly. That was the first time uh, when well, that was a weird answer. <laughs> I agree, Leviathan. Like, so, I, I mean, I do know that I sometimes fail at seeing the obvious, and that I um, sometimes not uh, coming up fast with the right solutions. I know that, but it. it it actually makes me happy that you guys agree that it's a bit off sometimes here. That it's not so completely obvious or um, clear why that is the right answer and not option B, C whatsoever. This is again so... Ugh. How to explain Cus's presence at the crime scenes? Why was he in town? Actually, it's because he's a door-to-door -door salesman and I need to cut it there because it's not a coincidence, but... What are you gonna do? And then the second one? I don't know. Traveling by train? If that has something to do with, like, medical records, then I'm gonna cry, because that makes no sense at all. Okay, let's go with travel sickness and swimming. Nope. We tried that earlier. Okay, you know what? Let's try the medical thing. Dr. Clark's patient's records provided a very useful list of potential victims, sorted by alphabetical order. The killer definitely used it, explaining the fact that all the victims were former patients of the doctor. It is this fact that clears cast once and for all, because he never had access to these records. So how did he happen to be at the scene of the crimes? Either the murderer sent him there, or Cus was following him closely. Cus's highly suggestible nature leads us to the second hypothesis. The murderer was manipulating him. He systematically sent Cus to the towns where he was going to strike, so that the suspicion would land on the poor man's shoulder. That's evil! What sort of killer could have such a plan? And what would he gain from three completely different murders? Indeed, it seems unlikely that the same murderer committed all the crimes. What should we take from that? I love how it actually explains why those answers were right just after it, and then it makes sense because then you then you know what the game was trying to get you to, but. It, if you're just thrown at it, it's it's a bit hard, but, well, <laughs> uh, anyways, so, manipulative, yep, using cost, yep, following him, yeah, but, more than 
than one killer. I ain't That would be weird. Except there is someone who's mani manipulating others. Like, yeah, well, cast and even more other people. Um, to, to commit these murders. And there is actually more than one murderer, but it's one mastermind behind all of them. It would also fit. Okay, what options do we have here? Say that just one murder is of interest to the killer. I don't think so. Say the murderer kills for pleasure. I don't think so. If if he just kills for pleasure, why would he need to um to include us? Doesn't fit. Say that the killer has developed a taste for murder. Hmm. Say that there are three murderers. To be honest, of all of these options here, I'd say three murderers, meaning one mastermind controlling each m of, of the three murderers to commit the murders, to commit the crimes. And the one mastermind not even like um, getting his own hands dirty. That would be sick. What if it's some sort of manipulation in, um, in a way of um, uh, hypnosis or something? A, hy a hypnosis mastermind who controls his minions to, to commit crimes? I mean... Um, Reiki says, some kind of psychos and murderers needs the attention and the kills to get pleasure. Yeah, it's right. It's right. Um, so not... You mean, it's, it's not, um... Yeah, say that the murderer kills for pleasure. Meaning, not the kills bring him pleasure, but the whole thing around it. Like the fame, um, the cat and mouse play with uh, Poirot and Hastings. That could be true. That could be true. I think uh, I think you have a good point there. Um, and it says, imagine how huge ego rush it would be to get someone else to do something as permanent as murders for you. <sighs> I mean. The thing is, like, if if this is really hypnosis, and my theory would be right here, that I mean, that would be insane, right? But let's say if that was the case, um, <sighs> hypnosis always needs the uh, the person that gets um, hypnotized um, to be willing, at at least to some part. So you can't break someone's will and just do it like that you need him you need a part of him to do it and it would fit like let's take a look at uh, here at donald maybe a part of him or like at her maybe a part of them wanted her to go out of the way like i mean she wanted donald now she has him hmm? um uh, the first one, Miss uh, Miss Asher, right? Um, well, the husband in a drunken state or something. I don't know. Um, the doctor. Well, we have like um, we have like this connection between Thora and um, the uh, brother of Sir Carmichael. I think it was called Frank, right? And that's what they said earlier, like, there are motives. 
There are motives for each one of them, sort of. Um, but is it enough? It could be enough to get hypnotized and do it without even knowing that they did it. So, hmm. Um, Leviathan says three murderers on Lucas Snore to preach. Yes, buddy, you got it totally right. If that is really the thing here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, if, if there will be something showing up here, Breather, Nor, and Lucas are the killers, I'm gonna reward you with 1,000 bones, alright? I mean it. If that will happen, I'm gonna do it. Um... And it says, nah, good old manipulation of a person who in this case is psychologically not fit. However, I'm not saying that that's the case in this game. Um, yeah, well, of course, it, it it's definitely easier to, to hit on someone who's um, in, in a bad mental state. And they all were. Like, um, the husband of Miss, uh, Miss Asher, drunk, Donald, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, well, Thora, Thora and, um, and Frank, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> dear mate, um, I'm gonna go with my theory here, three murderers, each not completely knowing what he does, each one of them sort of manipulated, maybe hypnotized, sort of something like that. I'm gonna go with that. There is not one murderer, but three accomplices who all use the same scenario. Do you mean that three murderers with quite different aims joined forces to create a smoke screen? Here's another question. Is it still necessary to find a motive for each crime and the one in Andover poses problem? Why was poor Mrs. Asher killed? Hmm, indeed. It would be best to forget the theory. Hmm. Okay, trial and error. So that's not the case because... Because there's no real motive to kill the first one. Yeah, okay, I agree. Killer has developed a taste for murder. That's too vague. Um, one murder is... Of well played. <laughs> one murder is of interest to the killer. Nah. I, I mean, maybe. Maybe. But we don't know that. We have no hint on that, so let's go with the kills for pleasure. Leviathan, <laughs> you're gonna cry if the murderer, murderer's name is Lucas, or if he even looks like him. <laughs> yeah. The murderer does not kill out of interest, but for pleasure. You yourself told us that the murderer was not a psychopath. Ah, <sighs> oui, absolument. Therefore, let us look for something else. <laughs> That is so stupid, like, the murderer kills for pleasure, eh? Doesn't make any sense. Oh, absolutely right. <laughs> um, but, like, is that automatically so that, um, if, that, if you, if you kill for pleasure that you're automatically a psychopath and that you're not? That you cannot be smart or just, like just like um I'm I'm missing for a word here. Um That he's smart and and, and, and calculating and, and stuff like that. So maybe this excludes each other. Well, then, 
One murder must be of interest to the killer because this is too vague. The killer has developed a taste for murder. Yeah, which hasn't? If if it's serial killer, mm. you put your theory in the trash. Yeah, well, buddy, I I put mine first <laughs> to the to the trash bin. All right, one murder is of interest to the killer. Just one murder was of benefit to the murderer. The others were just diversions. On reflection, there is only one conclusion. The murderer killed once out of interest and twice to divert our attention. This reasoning points at two potential culprits. Franklin Clark. Donald Fraser? Yes, mademoiselle. That's good thinking. Mr. Fraser may have killed Betty out of jealousy. Mr. Clark may have killed his brother in order to inherit his large fortune. Both have a motive. But Donald did not have access to Dr. Clark's records. Please allow me to disagree with you, mademoiselle. Hmm. One of the detective master by working. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm so... Oh, <laughs> I'm doing so well here. It's not embarrassing at all. Oh, God. Indicate that Donald was treated by Dr. Clark. We don't know that, do we? Donald, Donald's firm... Oh, yes! That was the case, right? Donald's firm worked for Clark, didn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was the case. He works for Court and Brunskill, one of whose clients was Sir Carmichael. It doesn't prove that I went to Combside. You could have done it. And you may have used the opportunity to take a look at Sir Carmichael's records. Do you think I'm guilty? You? Or Mr. Franklin Clark? That's ridiculous! Both of you have a motive. The question is, which of you has the profile that most resembles the murderer? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. <laughs> and they're gonna stand like... <gasps> 15 minutes later. <laughs> Oh my god, he takes so long. Um, Racky Jackie, isn't the smartest person, so we have to be extra quiet. Thank you very much. That's most kind of you. <laughs> Megan really liked. Okay, let's see. It's not clever. Um. This would prove that he's not clever. Let's see, no. <laughs> okay. Um, is he clever? He, he's not. He's a bright man with a promising career. Well, I'd say different, but it's okay. You said that as I'm only reminding you. Yeah, Reiki. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's alright. Yeah, yeah. Just, just put your finger in the wound. Just press it gently. Very nice. <laughs> is Donald sure of himself? Uh, nope. He has doubts. He's easy to influence. Donald is a seducer. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does Domino like trains? Oh, he does. He likes trains. Is Donald impulsive? Yep. He's quick tempered. Is Donald generous? He's a true gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald may share many character traits with the murderer. 
but he does not have his cold indifference. He has a temper. It is hard to imagine him planning anything. Also, jealousy is his motive, and crimes of passion are rarely planned. Right, I suppose it's my turn to be subjected to the same scrutiny. Absolutely, Mr. Clark. <laughs> Just give me Let two minutes. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. And then he's gonna be like... <laughs> it's Franklin clever. Jackie, I think when I don't think of it, Wolfie will stand right behind me with an axe be and be at me. That's a very dark opinion you have about me. An axe is really messy, buddy. <laughs> oh god. Thor uh, okay, is Frankel clever? Um. He was a good student. He's clever. Is he sure of himself? Yeah. Probably because he reads strange stuff. Nope. Uh, Sure of himself. Oh, sure of himself. Yeah, okay. He's sure of himself. What? Congratulations, Wolf. You're now a cat. Am I missing something? <laughs> I am missing something. Oh my god. Is Franklin a seducer? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Does Franklin like trains? <clears throat> he has a book about ra railways. Is Franklin impulsive? He's cold. Is Franklin generous? Yeah, he is. It's Frank. As you have all seen, there is a disturbing similarity between Mr. Clark's profile and that of the killer. In actual fact, it is exactly the same. Mr. Poirot, your psychological studies are interesting, but your conclusions do not add up. Why would I have wished my brother's death? The inheritance is lawfully mine. I just have to wait. No, you had to act quickly. He had to act quickly. Because of Thora Gray. Because she was probably about to get uh, married to... So come Michael. Because of Miss Gray. <gasps> Mademoiselle, also you haven't been telling the truth. There is no doubt in my mind that you would have found a way to marry Sir Carmichael after Lady Clark's death. For you, Mr. Clark, it was a disaster. If Miss Gray had children by your brother, you would not have inherited a thing. You realized the danger after reading several letters from Comside. Especially one in which your brother opened his heart to you. So you hurried home from China, and you took action. In truth, Kirst was no more than a puppet manipulated by the real culprit. You, Mr. Clark. Such an imagination, Mr. Poirot. In fact, nobody manipulated Kirst. The famous instructions he received by post. He wrote them on the typewriter. We know that for sure. Oh, no. You know perfectly well. That is not true. Eh bien, voilà. Light has now been shed on the ABC murders. Your theories are ingenious, but you haven't any proof. One point to him. For the moment, I have no material proof. Either I admit to it, or I bluff. <laughs> Perfect. 
Um, <laughs> Reiki, I will not kill you. How about that? I have no R buddies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> event and item of proof found in Alice Ashes tobacco shop? No. Lie about the fingerprints found on Cust's typewriter? No. Say that the proof is going to be easy to find. Admitting that we don't have anything, right? But invent an item of proof found in Alice. He's too clever for that. Proof is easy to find now that we know where to look. You have nothing on me. You're bluffing, Mr. Poirot. Come on, Thora, there's nothing for us to do here. Don't touch me. <laughs> Thora! <laughs> I understand why you never wanted to lend me your new typewriter. And why you were searching through your brother's things. And the hole you dug on the moors. What did you hide there? The knife you used to kill your brother? All right. Well played. I lose. Whoa. The game's up. Whoa. I didn't expect that of Thora now. Don't come near me! Yes! Blanks. I'll never let you take me, Mr. Poirot! <laughs> da, 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 da. Blanks in the pistol. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Clark. There is no easy death for you. I expected your reaction, so I used blanks. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but your second chance has been lost. Franklin Clark will never inherit his brother's fortune. Disappointed at having missed the chance to become Lady Clark, Thora Gray left England. Donald Fraser and Megan Barnard married. On Poirot's recommendation, Mary Drower started to work for Lady Clark. The elderly lady's condition suddenly took a turn for the better. And a few months later, to Dr. Logan's great surprise, she was back on her feet again. According to this eminent physician, it appears to be an extremely rare case of spontaneous remission. Lady Clark has enjoyed very good health ever since. Journal of an Innocent. The incredible story of ABC. As for AB Cust, after being advised by Poirot, he made a great deal of money by selling his story to the press. And as for me, and with business booming, the Black Swan has become the number one tourist attraction in the whole of Yorkshire, even more popular than York Minster. enjoyed this um that was a very good game i gotta say i feel like sometimes the um combinations uh like the conclusion things were a bit off but yeah we we uh, came through it but uh and overall the story was really cool and i think the voice acting was very good as well and um yeah cool that was a good game how did you how do you like it? And it says there's quite a good chance that uh, would have still been lethal. Why? If it was all blankets? 
<laughs> Ricky, he pulls out a gun and Wolfie's screaming, yes! <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sure what to pick um, in the end there. If we should really pick like uh, lethal ammunition or non-lethal ammunition. And I was like, maybe Hastings would point the gun at someone to bluff, maybe? Um, but not to really shoot someone. So that's why I kind of stick to um, to the blanks. And uh, well, I didn't imagine it being this way. But um, as a cool mastermind, uh, <laughs> we have done the right thing and um, foreseen the situation. Oh, that was cool. Um, what I didn't expect was uh, Thora um, giving him away in, in the end, though. Blank rounds still generate considerable pressure. Yeah, I do. I do believe that. Um, but if you if you feel like um, even even a shot with a real bullet in right into your head doesn't mean it's automatically lethal, right? I mean, there are, there are really some cases where people kind of try to shoot themselves and the bullet is stuck in the head and they just went to the hospital, sort of. <laughs> that happens. It's weird and strange and definitely not uh, happening a lot, but it happens. But as, as uh, we've seen it, he, he put it like there or something. So it wasn't directly here on... on uh, on, on the thing so I think that was all right but holy hell like he came up with all of this just to get away with his uh, with the killing of his brother I mean yeah I gotta be honest with you it kind of made the whole thing a lot more difficult. Um, but still, still, that was, that was insane. That was insane. <laughs>